You've done very well in the first quarter against estimates, beating those estimates. How much does that set the path for the rest of the year, Frederick? Does this strong performance continue? Uh, yes, of course, we will know, but we consider that the situation of the market is relatively good. We expect a quite good summer, I would say. We have during the first quarter a positive unit revenue, which is great for an airline, and we expect it will still be the case in the third quarter and also probably for the last quarter of the year. So it is a good environment, commercially speaking, yes. Fascinating reading of this, uh, this increasing depth of relationship that you're establishing with the rest of uh, your Sky Team partners, with Delta, with the Chinese airline, with Virgin and others. If you were able to all merge, if authorities around the world let you, would you be doing that right now? Oh, we have to go a bit slowly. Huh? First, first of all, today <laughs> we are, I think, clearly uh, creating uh, even stronger links between uh, Air France, uh, Air France KLM, of course, uh, between Delta. We are entering the stake into Virgin. We are also making the link stronger with China Eastern. So I think clearly it is a step to the consolidation of the industries. You know that the airlines industry is extremely fragmented. Uh, for legal reasons, because of the legislation and the rules for the traffic rights. And of course, with the type of operation we have announced yesterday, I think that we are uh, making a quite positive step. This industry needs to be consolidated and these links we create with the partners is something I think extremely positive. So we are all excited uh, with, uh, with that deal. We are close to Delta, okay. close to uh, Virgin. Uh, but do you need, Frederick, do you need full consolidation, full mergers to really fight effectively against the Gulf carriers? Yeah, first, uh, you have seen yesterday the results of uh, Etihad, which are a bit, uh, a bit negative, I would say, more than 1.5 billion of losses. So just explaining that also for the Gulf carriers, the situation is not always easy. Uh, we have always claimed, as did uh, the, uh, the partners into Delta, that we are just looking for a fair competition, which means that we ask the golf carrier to apply them the same rules we have accepted in Europe or in the US. And that's why we continue to advocate for the level playing thing that everybody is expecting in this quite competitive industry. You've recently set up a new lower cost airline uh, within Air France KLM. This is June, of course. Update us on where you're going to fly and whether you still want to get a better deal with your pilots. You've achieved that with cabin crew. Do you still want something better from the pilots? No, I think that it's great. We have signed during the last weeks one deal with the pilots and one deal with all the uh, unions of the cabin crew. So we are ready to launch uh, to launch this new project of this long haul and medium haul low cost into the Air France KLM group. I think it is a great news also. It's just showing that uh, we are moving fast. We are changing progressively, improving uh, year over year. And I think it is really what we have to do in order to uh, be uh, positive is every first to client and second or shareholder. So we are all exciting to, excited sorry, to continue on that track and to continue to move. This is a lower cost base within Air France KLM. How much, how much of your business do you see being operated by June into the future? Uh, for the time being, we plan to have 18 aircraft for the medium haul and 10 aircraft in the long haul. So it will be in total by the end of 2020, a company, a company with 28 aircraft one-third on the long haul and two-thirds on the medium haul. It is a, a new concept, a, a new product, something a bit more hype, uh, targeting the millennials people and also all the people who want to be a bit more uh, young in their spirit. So I think it's a great step for the Air France KLM group, of course.